Hi, Max. How's it going? Doing well. I've been <laughs> planning my four-week gap between my last day and joining yeah. McKinsey in end of April. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. So first of all, uh, congratulations, right? Congratulations on pulling off McKinsey. Um, it's, I mean, obviously it's a huge achievement, right? And uh, it's a great firm to uh, um, to to be in and to to develop and to also find out what are the things that you want to uh, focus on going forward. So um, yeah, I think it would be great if uh, uh, we could talk a little bit about your journey, right? How you um, um, how your preparation went on and uh, how you then did your interviews, how these interviews felt, etc. So yeah. What, what would you say? How did your journey go? Sounds good. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a long journey. Mm -hmm. So I guess I can give a 30 seconds um, introduction about my background. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I was born and raised in China. I came to the US for college. I joined a top 20 university, not exactly a target school for MBB. Mm -hmm. And I did some social science major. As you can see, I'm not a very strong quant person. Mm -hmm. uh, per se. And then I joined a top 10 university for business school. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I've always wanted to do consulting, but I never really built a skill sets. And I know my, my resume is not exactly what they would look for. Uh, mm -hmm. After graduation, after getting my master's degree, I joined a tech startup in supply chain, which is kind of an interesting combination. Uh, about three, four years, I feel like I've learned a lot. And I dropped my resume and Miracles happen. Like McKinsey picked up my resume, like no network, <laughs> no no anything, and they invite me for an interview. Yeah. So that was, I think, beginning of Q4 in 2020, mm -hmm. and I immediately panicked because I know even though it's a long time dream of mine, I'm not exactly in an environment where I'm surrounded by uh, my business friends with, who, with, who with whom I can practice. Like mm -hmm. so, I decide to get some professional help because mm -hmm. I know. This is kind of my only chance in the foreseeable future to join a big platform like this. And I, at the time, I don't have any other consulting firms in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. So I went to prep launch and, and decided to get professional help. Yeah. So that's when I um, encountered CD. I would say CD helped me a lot in the early stage of my preparation because as you can imagine, getting the invitation to the interview, not knowing what timeline I'm looking for, mm -hmm. I don't really have like half a year to read the books and pick up all the skill sets I need. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I found Sadeep, especially in the early stage, because he's really good at helping me feel out the noise. Instead of telling me what I should be doing, he made it very clear, okay, you can read this book. You should not be looking at this book and you should not be doing the X and Y and Z. And at the time I work about 60, more 70 hours for a week because it's a startup. So I really don't have much time and knowing what not to waste my time on, I believe was very crucial. And it also, he also freed me from memorizing 12 frameworks uh, from case in point. I wasn't going to do that anyway, but it's kind of out assurance because I believe for a lot of people who are prepping, you kind of enter in this panic area where you want to, where you want to devour and digest everything you can get your hands to just because it feels like that's what everyone doing. And if you don't, if you don't read those books, you feel like you're missing out something. Mm -hmm. So I think this is where it's really helpful for me to make sure I put my time and efforts in the right area from the beginning. So that's how the Q4 started. I, really getting to the prep mode, I think more like late October, late November, because as I found out, McKinsey is extremely friendly with time schedule, especially for experienced hire, they understand work can happen. So I temporarily scheduled my, I think, first round targeting end of November, thinking holiday, uh, the holiday season can give me a break. I ended up having to push a bit more just because I'm not feeling like I'm ready. I push to January, but later did again for some due to some family situation. And also yeah. I, yeah. if I work in supply chain, as you can imagine, the holiday season is not yeah. necessarily a break. I'm yeah. really glad I did that because how I feel, despite what uh, what everyone else says, and despite this whole case prepping being a marathon, it's not right. It's really important if I'm, feel, if I'm feeling ready because yeah. Yeah. towards the end, I think how I carry myself um, matters a lot. Yeah. So I eventually 
uh, had my first and second round in February, and I got a partner call in an hour after my interview, and yeah. he said I got to, I did pretty well. I got three out of three from all the partner rounds, and yeah, yeah. I was in an offer. Fantastic. I think you're, you're you're touching on a very important point, right? Because very often people have are a little bit afraid of, oh, should I call them to reschedule my interview, right? Will they penalize me for it? So many people are very uh, insecure about that, and. Um, uh, it's 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 really important uh, uh, that yeah that you that you take the time that you need until you feel ready right um, so it's 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 an important message so um, talking about your your interviews that you uh, that you then uh, did with the firm how did they feel right and not I, I don't mean in terms of yeah how difficult was the case but like in general was what was the um, what was the mood with the interviewers, right? What would you say? How would you describe this? Um, I would say overall the experience is awesome. They are extremely nice and they really feel like they're there to help you, to help you show the best of you as opposed to trick you and see you fall. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the first and second round a little separately. So phone, uh, the phone assessment went smoothly. They're nice and not much to say there. For the first round, it feels a lot more structured. Um, one thing I was very concerned before the interview is timing. I'm someone who tend to spend a lot of time walking through my structure mm -hmm. and I was worried about not being able to get into enough questions during that 25, 30, 25, 30 minutes we have. Yeah. But no, I actually had a good time because A, if we, if we only finish three questions, then we only finish three questions. I am confident I was able to show my structure thinking, my approach, read a bit exhibit and show my math skills. That's enough. So they are the ones who are uh, keeping tabs on the time and I'm there just to have a good time. So yeah. that's really good. Um, with the behavioral part, they're also extremely engaging with questions. And I would say for the first round, especially the first interviewer who's also who's an associate, he's a lot more engaging. Uh, he would not, he would tell me this is a this is very interesting. This is a very comprehensive for, framework. Let, let's go on. So I think those verbal and nonverbal approval also really made me feel good. Towards mm -hmm. the end, as you can imagine, with um, the manager interviewer and also with the partners, they are a little hard to read. So I think yeah. that's something I'm, I'm mentally prepared. So, but it's, I think it's a good thing. It's a good to know. As mm -hmm. for the partner round, I was I was reading posts on Quora, um, prep launch. I was expecting them to be super tough because I was told <laughs> partner has very little patience. Um, my <laughs> personal experience is a if I put into enough efforts in my PEI to make sure the story flows well, mm -hmm. I should not be losing their attention. Like I should, if I am losing people's attention, that's the best sign of my storytelling skills. Mm -hmm. And other thing is with a case, as many posts said, it's a little less structured. Uh, for instance, yeah. with one of a discussion we have when it's when it's pretty obvious that the whole case is going to focus on the cost optimization, the mm -hmm. partner pressured me to talk about revenue generation. Uh, we brainstorm for 15 minutes. I mm. tried to um, deviate a few times and he said, no, I know you can do the cost. I want you to put on your <laughs> marketing hat and talk to and tell me how you're going to sell this for more. So yeah. I think that's the part where if you try to guess what's going to be covered in the round, it's not going to work. Just, I think, see a lot, see more and be prepared for all the angles to this as a case mm -hmm. uh, can be very helpful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. So um, which which office will you will you join? Atlanta. Atlanta, and I think yeah. it's uh, it's in the operations practice. Do I remember correctly? Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Cool, cool. So yeah, uh, awesome. Um, congratulations again. I think, as I said, this is a great achievement, right? Um, and uh, obviously, you've put in a lot of diligent work, right? Uh, you've taken the time that was required, and yeah, I think it all paid off. So, um, um, how much time do you now still have until uh, until the new life, quote unquote, is starting? A little over a month. I haven't. I I just put in my two week notice, so I have all the time to hand off and get ready. Okay, fantastic. So um, all the best. I'm sure uh, you're gonna do uh, amazingly well, right? And um, yeah, um, as I said, it's a fantastic place to uh, to have a career, and uh, either in the long term or even uh, sometimes uh, it just brings you opportunities that you didn't even think of, uh, uh, right, uh, within just a couple of years. So 
I agree. All and I think, <laughs> thank you. And I guess my final comment is towards the end of my case interview prep, like mm -hmm. right before the interview, I was telling myself, even if I don't get this opportunity, it's been great pushing myself to practice structured thinking and practice to communicate in an effective way. Uh, so do you remember as my coach that one of my main issues in the beginning is to, for some sentence, you can say in one, in 30 seconds, I come I come up with like five sentences in 10 seconds to explain the same concept. Mm -hmm. And that's a skill I believe is important wherever I go. So I am grateful that I get to embark, the, embark on this journey to rigorously practice a way of thinking and communicating. And I got a job. So that's like the big bonus towards the end. Fantastic. Fantastic. And as you can imagine, this is also, of course, the greatest reward to me because as I always say, right, uh, my, my mentee's success is, uh, is of course my success, right? Because I will only be successful if my mentees get their offers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. And then <laughs> enjoy uh, the rest of this weekend and uh, congratulations again. Cheers. Bye. Yeah.